Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to bring you another round of science fiction and fantasy reads. I have some good reviews here for you all. Currently I've been binging through or catching up with a lot of series that I'm in the middle of and I really try hard to stay on top of series so that I don't fall behind. I know it's a chronic booktube problem to be reading too many series but I usually actually keep it pretty under wraps and I'm usually picking up the next book as soon as it comes out. So I have lots of new releases, lots of new favorites and yeah, lots of big chunky books. People have asked how I read so much and I could do a whole video on the topic. A few people have left comments about that. So if that is something you'd like me to film, definitely let me know. But in the meantime, I've got some great books, so let's get started here. First, as we do, let's start with science fiction, and I read Blind Space by Jeremy Saul, and this is the second book in a series that starts with Stormblood. I read that book years ago and have recommended it on my channel, and I was really eager to get caught up. The UK edition actually came out at the end of last year, but it's now available in North America, and oh my goodness, I had so much fun with this one. If you're going to start the series again, you start back with Stormblood, and in that book you follow a man who has Stormblood technology, so there's this ancient alien technology technology that has been used to enhance human ability. It almost gives them like an adrenaline rush and makes them better soldiers. So they have used this technology to enhance the military and we deal with the fallout of that because afterwards they are having trouble understandably getting back into society. And in the first book we follow a man whose brother has been accused of things and he has to go on the run. I just grabbed the first book as a cyberpunk thriller and I definitely agree that that is still true. But in the second book it definitely gave me more space opera vibes, which you know is one of my favorite subgenres. so I was really excited to get into this one. This one for me just really came together. I think that the first book felt a bit like a debut, which isn't a knock on it, but the second book just felt a lot stronger in terms of the writing, the characters, the humor, the plot, the pacing, all of it worked really well for me. I really enjoyed it and I dare I say this, but it kind of gave me Expanse vibes, which I know is a very dangerous comparison to make, but I really thought that it had the good character work that I love with just a little bit of humor. And if you want an action-packed story with really good character work, this is definitely one I would personally recommend. I loved it a lot and can't wait to see what is coming next. Next up, we have Sweep the Stars by Morris Broaddus, and this one I received from Tor Books for review. This is the first book in a new series, and it follows a future that is very much inspired by African futurist ideas, and so it's a story set in a future where we have expanded beyond the earth and follows the different uh, colonies. So we follow multiple different perspectives. I'll be honest, this is a really hard book to summarize because it's very intricate, very detailed. It has really vast world building. This book in some ways, in terms of the world building, reminded me a bit of Nadia Korafor. So if you're a fan of her work, this one might be right up your alley. And there's also some interesting use of second person narration, which actually gave me vibes of N.K. Jemisin, specifically the Broken Earth trilogy. So if you're interested in those authors, if you enjoy those kind of works, this is one you might really enjoy. I'll be totally honest that while I appreciated so many elements of this one, as a story it didn't quite come together for me. I just found it to be a little bit fragmented just because the narrative is so vast in scope. So on my first read through this, I didn't completely love it but really appreciate it and I might give it another try before I film my year-end video because it might become a favorite once I get a little bit more warmed up to the characters and world building and all of that. Also from Tor Books, we have Worlds of Exile and Illusion by Ursula K. Le Guin, and this is a bind up or a new edition of three of the books in the Hainish cycle. And I think most people are aware of The Left Handed Darkness, which is actually the fourth book in the companion series. And as most people do, I started with that one, and I knew that it wouldn't spoil the other ones because they were just companion books, but I didn't actually know much about the other books in the cycle. And I think a lot of people are in the same boat. So I was really excited to get the opportunity to read this re-edition and it was really interesting to see how the stories evolve. You definitely can see similar themes. So I would say if you like The Left Hand of Darkness, if you like the ideas she explores, her writing style, her prose, and the fact that her stories are a little bit more unique and slower paced, it's definitely not heavy on the plot, which is something I personally was missing a bit in these stories, but it has that anthropological feel and I think, again, if you like what was explored in The Left Hand of Darkness, you'll also enjoy these ones. 
personally, I felt that Left Hand to Darkness was a lot stronger, but if you are a completionist, if you love her work, if you are looking to get into more science fiction by women or more classic sci-fi, this is a collection you might want to check out yourself. I've been really excited that Tor has been reissuing so many older classic books, especially classic sci-fi books, and giving them new life, so I'm really excited to receive another book in their Tor Essentials catalog. And this is future Rachel here jumping in because apparently I forgot to film a one book review and that is for Prison of Sleep by Tim Pratt. This is a book I received from review for Angry Robot Books and I read the previous book in the series, Doors of Sleep, I believe last year when it came out. This story follows a man who every time he falls asleep he wakes up in a different universe. So it's the idea of multiverses and sometimes it's fantastic the place that he arrives and sometimes it's absolutely terrible and he's rushing to get back to sleep as soon as possible. When I read the first book, I was surprised by it because it was different than what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be more of a sci-fi thriller, but I didn't find it to be very fast-paced and instead it was very relationship and character focused. And it just was, again, different than what I wanted. But this one I think worked a lot better for me, partially because my expectations were set in the right place, so I kind of knew what I was going to get. I would also say that the story is a lot bigger in scope in this one because of the events that you find out by the end of the first book and so I found this book to be a little bit more exciting and enjoyed it and like I said once you kind of know what you're getting I do think it's a really cool and unique series that you really don't hear lots of people talking about so definitely if that sounds up your alley you might want to check it out for yourself. Now switching over to fantasy I did a reread of The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwen going on to read the new book which is The Hunger of the Gods and this series has been everywhere but if you don't know this is a Viking inspired series told over multiple points of view. We follow uh, primarily a woman who is a mother and a warrior and right at the beginning of the first book her son goes missing and she has to go search for him. We also follow other Viking warriors and these books are filled with a lot of humor. They are also very gritty and dark and grim and not necessarily grim but like just the world is very ugly. It doesn't shy away from the fact that ugly and terrible things happen and so I like that aspect of the books. It's really interesting. It has non-human characters or beings that exist like trolls and all of that and I just thought it was really imaginative and I liked the second book. I enjoyed continuing on with the characters I already knew. I think I slightly preferred the first book in the series more but I pretty much say that about every series because I tend to get really attached to the start of a story and then I find it hard for an author to potentially match that experience when you kind of are just new and fresh to a whole world and seeing it for the first time. So definitely recommend this one. Very similar to the first. Strong prose, all of that, good character work. So if you like the first one, if you like the action in it, I don't think you'll be disappointed with the next entry here. And then I went on to read Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is the second book in a series that starts with Black Sun, which I read I think last year or the year before. And this series is inspired by Central American mythology. And as I said before, I always enjoy when I get kind of a non-European setting. And I love the magic. I like the imagination. I find this series to just be very unique. It also has some great representation in terms of different sexualities, genders, etc. And just again, it's very different than a lot of the really classic fantasy you see out there. I will say that I like this second book but probably not as much as the first. Again is a theme you'll see in this video but in this case I thought that it was good. I do struggle with the romance in this story and it's just the fact that it's not even the romance itself, it's the fact that I don't really like one of the characters who's in the romance. I don't actually like one of the main perspectives in the story and that I think is what holds me back from fully loving this series but I love so many elements of it. It's still really engaging, it's easy to fly through, it's entertaining and so if you haven't picked it up definitely recommend Black Sun. I really did enjoy that one and I personally recommend the audio because it's done with multiple narrators and I think it's really well produced. And finally, I binged through an entire backlist trilogy, and those books were Kushal's Dart, then Kushal's Chosen, and then finally Kushal's Avatar All by Jacqueline Carey. I have always seen these covers online and was really intrigued. I finally got the opportunity to read them with my online friend Romy, and they were so much fun. This is a piece of historical fantasy, which isn't normally something I'm drawn to because I don't normally read a lot of historical fiction, but it's one that is so well crafted. The world building in this is so amazing 
amazing that it just really pulled me in. The basic plot is that we follow a woman named Fedra who has been trained as a woman of the night or has been trained to have talents in the bedchamber, as I think the back of the book says. But you also find out that she is also being trained to be a spy. And so because of that, this book is filled with political intrigue because she has this dual role. She also, you find out, has this gift that allows her to experience pain and pleasure together. It's a very complicated gift, as you can imagine. So this book is just, for me, the perfect balance of some amazing world building. The character work is phenomenal. I really fell in love with her. She's a very complex character. This book also has some incredible character work. Fedra herself and the other characters are all really complex and nuanced. And I really like how it discusses different themes surrounding sexuality and expression of that. And you have different cultural ideas around whether or not what Fedra is doing is appropriate or inappropriate and so forth. And so it just the discussions it goes into, I thought were really well done. I really like these books. When I first went into them, I'll admit, I kind of thought they were going to be a little bit higher up in terms of like, I know I thought they were just going to be really smutty fantasy books and I was here for it, but I was wonderfully surprised how detailed these books are. And I don't think that you want to sell these books short because again, these are incredible fancy books, but they do have a romance or at least a sex aspect to them. And definitely they have adult content. And I personally enjoy that. I definitely thought it was interesting the way that they play very lightly with BDSM, but in a way that I felt was very um, appropriate or isn't going to like turn off readers that aren't really into that otherwise. But this book, like I said, kind of had it all. I enjoyed the first one, lots of setup, lots of intrigue. The political intrigue in this whole series is phenomenal, especially I'd say in this first book. And the book that really made me fall in love with this series was actually book two, which again was against my rule, but Kushal's Chosen just has some really good plot elements, some things that I really like to see in books. The main character is put into a situation that is just very uncomfortable and just kind of deals with a lack of consent and just these difficult situations that kind of play into some of the themes I love to see in thrillers. I will tease you with that for those of you that watch my stabby videos. But this one was just really detailed. I fell in love with some of the characters. There's a seafaring aspect, so we have like pirates and those sorts of characters, and it just was so gripping. So this is definitely my favorite of the three. I did, of course, finish it out with Avatar, which I liked, but I'll be honest, I felt like it was slower paced and not as good as the last two. And yes, if you're wondering, I'm now continuing on with the later companion series because it's so good and I just want more, so stay tuned for further reviews from Jacqueline Carey's books. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to hear of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And I'd also love to hear how is your series management going? Are you keeping on top of the series that you're currently reading or has it gotten out of hand? Like, which happens to a lot of booktubers. Also, would you love me to do more content on a series that I'm in the middle of, series that I've completed? Is that something that's interesting to you all? If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of science fiction, fantasy, horror, and thrillers. If you are already subscribed, thank you so much. You can still help Help me out by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it around online, dropping a little comment, even if just a little emoji like, oh, I don't know, I'm so bad at this, like a bed? Is that a is that an emoji? Let's do that. And otherwise, if you want to hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss another video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.